Softer continues to push out updates at an incredible pace. So if you're interested in hearing about the new updates that they just released, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I own Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life using no-code tools. So if you're interested in learning more about that, check below. And if you're new here and you haven't yet gotten our free live training, I encourage you to join us. I'll include a link to that webinar below where I get on every week and I teach you the steps to automating using no code. So if you'd like to reclaim some of your time, that's a good place to start. Check out the link below. But without further ado, let's jump into the whole point of today's video. We are talking about these amazing new releases from Softer. And I'm gonna kick it off with number one. We are talking about the dynamic list block. This is now giving us the ability to add as many details to a listing block as we want. So real quick, here's an old one that I have built, an older, uh, an older softer portal. If I go into my list block, you know, this is grabbing all of the data from my Airtable base and it's presenting it, but you'll notice that my list items are preset, right? I can come in and toggle these on or off I can add things here, I can take them away and assign them to various parts of my Airtable data, but I'm capped out to what is pre-built here. And sometimes you wanna bring in more stuff, you wanna bring in less stuff, and you need this more dynamic functionality. So that's the way it used to work, but now we have the ability to add any number of new details to that list. So let's go into a new block First, we just click on blocks, we come on down to list, and we can install whatever list fits the format that we're looking for. I've already done that here and mapped it to my Airtable base and told it what table I'm looking at. Now, when you come down to the list item fields, you're going to see that you can add any number of additional fields to this list. So right now, we have an image, heading, text, tag, and upvote but you can add additional information as needed. You can also take these presets away by clicking into them and turning off those field settings. So let's go ahead and add a new one. Let's say we wanted to bring in the name in the form of text. By drilling into here after clicking add field, we can add our own label. Let's say we wanna just label it name. And then I can select the field inside my database. Again, bring in name here. And just like that, I now have this name, colon, and then Biff Tannen or George McFly or whoever it is on the team. Now, of course, I'd need to map these other fields as well, all of these different presets, or turn them off. But this way, I can now add any number of additional fields right to my list without having to drill into the detail. And so I can put everything at the highest level possible and get more flexibility on how I'm showcasing all that data. The second big update that Software just pushed out is page and block visibility based on user attributes. This is something we kind of had some control over before, but now at a page and a block level of detail, we can turn on or off certain aspects of our app. So we can turn off an entire page so that people, logged in users, can't see it unless they meet specific requirements, and we can do that at the block level as well. So let's start by talking about our data structure and then we can look at how this works with the block. So here I have a people table and our people have different roles, clients, managers, and consultants. Maybe all of these people have access to our data, but we want to make sure that only managers see the projects that are ongoing. So what I've done here is I've built a page in Softer and you see that I have a block at the top that says this page is for managers only. And then I have a block down below with projects and inside of these different projects, we're able to see the manager and also the consultant. So in order to get this to work, the first thing we obviously need to do is connect our software account with the table in our database that stores our user information. In my case, that's the people table, but if you need to make changes to this, you can go through and set this up for your particular use case. Connect it to your Airtable base, the table that stores your user's data, and then make sure to link to your email field and your name field if you have one. But now that we've got that set up, we now have access to all of the other data that lives in that base. And so in our particular case, we're gonna use that role function. 
And so going back into our pages, let's look at our projects table once again. So now we can go into our projects, click into the project itself, and you'll see that previously we had these conditional filters. So we could access data that lives inside of the projects table and try to limit what people see at that level. But now we have the ability to control visibility at the entire block level and even greater from the entire page level. So if we wanted to turn off this particular block to everyone but managers, we could come into the upper right corner, click on the visibility icon here, and stipulate that someone must be logged in. And once we've done that, we can go on to add additional conditions. So for example, the logged in user's role, and this is where we're accessing the different user attributes, but the role must be, in our case, manager. So I just type in manager and hit enter. And again, going back to our actual database, you'll see that only one person meets that condition. So let's take this out for a spin. First, what we do is publish our app. Go ahead and click publish here, and then you can open your subdomain up. I like to do this in an incognito window so that I can log in as a different user. Now, if I try to go directly to my projects page right now, I'm not logged in. And so as such, it doesn't know that I am a manager. And so I don't get the second block. All I see is the first block that says it's for managers only. So I have to log in so I can go back here. I can sign up with Emmett's email address. Emmett, if you remember, is our manager. I'll use his login password to sign in as him. And now when I go to that uh, projects, now that I'm signed in as a manager, I see all of the projects. Now to double check, let's log in as a different user. Let's say we logged in as a client, Jennifer here. I'll grab her email and flip back into my portal and log in as a different user. And then I can go to the projects page within this app. And let's see if we're able to see anything from here. Again, I'm getting this symbol that's, or this block that's telling me this page is for managers only and I don't see any more information. Now this is fine if you want all the pages to work for your database, but you don't want the, uh, the blocks to be visible. But you could take this a step further and just turn off this page entirely for anybody else. So let's see how we would do that. Flipping back into our uh, softer connection here, we can go into our pages and rather than affecting the projects block in particular, you know, we edited this one block here and set up the conditions in the visibility up here in the corner. But if we want to do that for the entire page, we can first start by clicking pages. We can drill into the settings for that particular page and we have visibility settings for the overall page here. So here we can stipulate similar or different rules. In our case, let's say we add those same rules here. We will say, the logged in user's email or role is manager. Again, just as I did before, I'm gonna type in the word manager and hit enter. And then I'm gonna click save from here. And if I publish our app one more time, I can go back to my logged in. Remember I'm logged in as Jennifer right now. And if I refresh this page, I get just a 401 error that I'm unauthorized and I've got to go back to the home page. I can't see anything there, not even the upper block. So this new visibility gives us a ton of flexibility. We can now add visibility features at the page level, at the block level, and then inline conditions inside of the block itself that alters the type of data that pulls in. Lots of different options available for us, lots of control that we get over who sees what data. The third cool feature that Softer added is including date fields inside of their forms. Now, if you haven't used forms already in Softer, you're really missing out on a big part of what the software can do. So in order to access forms, you need to first add a block that is a form block. I've added one here to request a callback, but if you were adding your own, what you would do is just click on the blocks, click on form and find a form that fits the layout, the general feel that you're going for. Of course, you can customize things once you've got it placed. So I've got this placed in here, so I'm gonna drill in 
and maybe I don't even want to ask their name or any of these other pieces of information. So I can just ditch all of these parts of the form. I do want their phone number so I know how to get a hold of them. Maybe I don't need company information. Maybe I don't need a message, but I do want to know when they want me to give them a call. So let's add that new field. I'm going to add a date field here. I can scroll down through all the different types of data and select date. I can leave a placeholder here that says, when should we call? And I'm going to come back to this tag. Now, before I move on, I'm going to go into Airtable and I will create a table called callbacks. This table is going to store any form submission and instantly record it in my database. So I can delete the, the starting fields that Airtable creates for me. And I just need those two different fields, phone number and date and time. So let's grab phone number here. And then I will also grab the uh, date and time of the call. And we'll go ahead and create this field. Now inside of Softer, I need to make sure to grab the name of these fields and map it directly to Softer. So this part needs to match a verbatim. So phone number, I'll go back into the phone number question on the form, expand that down, and that's the tag that I need to include here. Similarly, I'm gonna grab that date time, and this has to match here. So I need to dr drop that into the tag here for date time. Now, once I've set up my database and I have a table built to receive these form submissions, I can now go into Softer and tell it that when the button is pushed, I want to send the data to Airtable. So in this case, I just need to expand on the actions that this button will perform and select send to Airtable as my option. So we first connect to the base and from there we can connect to the table. In this case, the table that I built is called callbacks. So I need to sync up to that. And once we're all set with that, we should be able to publish it. Now we need to flip back into our working prototype. We can fill out some sample data to give this a test. And you'll notice that when we access the date field, the nice calendar view pops up. We see today is highlighted in red. We can scroll through, pick the day that works for a callback. We don't have the ability to control time yet. So right now we only can pick that date. But once I make that selection, I submit my inquiry and I get the green checkbox and I can flip back into my Airtable database and you'll see that a new record was instantly created. And this is really powerful because I'm not using any third party tools for automation. The form is submitted directly in Softer and it's talking and writing immediately to my Airtable database. I can test this out one more time. Let's add a different phone number and pick a different date. Let's say something in May, May 13th, submit my inquiry and you see as quickly as I can flip back into Airtable, that data is already received. So this is a great way for you to get instant feedback from people using your app. It's going to immediately show up in your Airtable database as soon as they submit a form. And now we have the capability of bringing in a date field, which really gives us new possibilities. That's it for the new updates from Softer. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. As I said earlier, I welcome you to join us for our free webinar training. We're going to talk about how you can automate your business to run more on autopilot so that you're not spending as much time doing the day-to-day -day admin work. If that's of interest, be sure to check the description below and I'll see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.